And I'm ready now to, we're calling on Stephen Blades, uh, 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 an act, he's a youth activity worker with Sphere 17, uh, a very good, very important local project. So Stephen will take you through his presentation now. Thanks. For Stephen. Right. Now, how's it going? Uh, there'll be no slagging. No slagging. No, not yet. Yeah, well, and uh, well done to uh, Near Drama. That was really good. I thought it was really good. So, yeah, it was really good. Fair play. Right, yeah, as Jack said, my name's Blades. I'm a youth worker in Sphere 17. Um, Sphere 17 is the regional youth service for Dublin 17. We're based just over in Darndale. Uh, I suppose our gig is we, we support young people. We believe young people uh, all have the ability to achieve great things, and we just, we're there to promote that and kind of support that and see what we can do. We do it through drop-ins, needs-based programmes, interest-based programmes, activities, all kinds of stuff. And uh, essentially, I'd consider myself and youth workers that I work with to be informal educators, and that's what we do. We work with 10 to 21 year olds, and it's really good. My role there uh, for a while has kind of been like as an arts worker. And one of my things a few years ago as the arts worker was to kind of link in with other organisations in the community and local organisations. So I kind of like winged near and winged kind of radio and media into the arts umbrella. And then I can't remember exa exactly, where's Paul? He might know, but I can't remember exactly how it happened. But that was where Sphere met near. And then uh, that was the beginning of it. So we started doing a few small tours. And so I'm just going to tell you about how Sphere and there, what's going on really, and how we know each other and what we're doing. So we started doing a few small tours. We'd take young people right at the station on Bunratty, show them about, do a few little mock interviews, record the voices. And it was just a bit of fun because a lot of young people had never really heard their own voice before played back to them. And we just had a bit of a mess. And it was kind of just planting that seed of interest and creating a bit of awareness to the young people that. This, this was on the doorstep, do you know? Um, near, near started covering, doing a few outside broadcasts at events that we were doing and stuff. I became a volunteer myself and we ran a volunteer training course that was catered for teenagers, for young people, and it all went really good. So I suppose at that point, um, you know, Near and Sphere, that was kind of the beginning of like a professional, healthy working relationship. It kind of organically blossomed. Yeah. I said, I read this, I kind of did these notes last night with my partner Kate, and she said, don't say organically, it sounds really arty. Do you know? But I just said it anyway. So yeah, it's funny how that was. So, um, so what I want to really talk about is, the, is what we've been doing recently, and it's a project called Story, that the young people came up with for the name. This was where ourself and our sphere and their kind of got together, and we said, what do we want to do? What can we do? We kind of started planning. We worked on a funding application together. And we kind of, this is where we kind of jumped in bed together, and we really started to work together and spend, spend time kind of planning and stuff. We got a group of young people. There was five and then six young people that were all kind of 16 to 20-year-olds. Um, there were Twiggy, Wiggy, Shannon, Neve, Hannah, and uh, Neil. <laughs> and... Um, I suppose it's important to say these young people are all from disadvantaged backgrounds. They're all from, uh, they've all had it tough. Some of them have got low uh, literacy levels. They're, um, you know, they're in, they're in and out of school a bit. They've not had it easy, and you know, the, the, if not involved in, they're certainly witness to a lot of antisocial behaviour, um, and and all the normal stuff that teenagers kind of. Just all that teenage stuff as well. So, so, so it's not easy for them uh, growing up. Um, but they're super, really good bunch, really good energy, really good um, sense of humour and that. So I'm just gonna, we're just gonna play you like a really a 30 second five clip of uh, just so you can kind of visualise a little bit of um, just to just to spice up the presentation a bit. We're gonna play 35 seconds. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the story. My name is Wiggy and my name is Twee, and you're listening to a new five part radio series produced by the young people from Sphere 17. Sphere 17 is the regional youth service for all 10 to 21 year olds in the area of Dublin 17, with centres in Darndale, Croyshwood, and Bonnybrook, and that's where we all go to chill. 
Over the next five programs in the series, we'll be looking at topics that interest and affect young people, such as relationships, alcohol and bullying. In the Force Aware programs, we focus on youth in the community, what facilities are there for young people in North Dublin, and how do they feel about school. I wanted to get up to in their spare time. So please stay tuned for the next half an hour, and you'll find out the story. It's cool. It's really good, right? So, so yeah, that was that was one of the intros that, that we did for the show. There's, um, yeah, so as they said, they said to me, we did, we, we did five programs. It was bullying, relationships, uh, cigarettes and alcohol, youth and community, and... Aye, aye. Role models. Aspirations are role models. Um, so, we, so we approached this and we had, we, we, had our own, we had our own outcomes, kind of objectives that our, our service would have at the beginning with any project. We wanted the young people to have an increased confidence and higher self-esteem and improved social skills from just participating in this programme and activity with the peers, with youth workers, with near staff. We wanted them to have the opportunity and a greater understanding to discuss relevant issues to them, which were the five programme topics. We wanted them to learn some radio skills, just practical skills about what it involved to produce and make a radio programme, and we really wanted them to have fun. It was, like, was, another, was, was a key thing. All things that we felt we could measure and f things that were specific changes, like in their knowledge or their understanding or skill set, or just their, even, the, even the young person's kind of level of functioning. Um, all, all, these, all, all these outcomes and what that we had seems to be similar to what, to what, to what Nair had as well. I suppose um, at, this point with the, at this point with these outcomes, we had like a long-term outcome, that we, we kind of wanted these young people to have a positive impact on their community. And we kind of felt, I suppose, by having them outcomes, it may lead to that in the long term. So it was all about the process of getting the young people in and getting them involved and doing it. And from this, and from them meeting these outcomes and taking part in this and making these, we met for 15 weeks for like a good few hours every Wednesday for 15 weeks. It was a big, long project and a big commitment and it showed a lot of discipline for the young people to do it. And in that process, from meeting these outcomes, there was just a huge amount of personal development and growth, and, uh, which, is, which is kind of the key things as what, as what Sphere 17 is about, really. The learning from it, am I speaking too fast? No? The learning from it, was it, who's, was it, are you laughing there, you think? Uh, the learning from it, there was two big learning things from it, I, I, I believe, as working with these. One is the trust. The young people were kind of given the trust to, to be able to speak. They were kind of asked their opinions and asked what they thought and what their hopes and concerns and feelings, everything. They were kind of asked, and not only were they asked, they were, they were listened to, and their, their answers and responses were valued and respected and recorded and, and listened to. See, a lot, of young, a lot of young people, like I say, especially from the people that we work with, are, um, they, might, they may find it difficult and challenging to articulate feelings and articulate uh, thoughts, but, but they still have them, and, and the reason that, that they find that so challenging is because they very rarely just asked what they, what, they, what they think and what they thought. And this whole programme, this everything, was, was, it, the, whole, the whole project was, was dependent on asking the young people what they thought and what, you know, giving them that platform to use their voice. And it was, um, it was vital that that, that that was like the whole gist of it. The other big learning thing is kind of around the task completion of a young person just doing something. Now, if it's something as, as so small as just um, kind of being advised how how's the correct way to speak at a microphone or how to kind of ask a question or anything or how to listen to somebody, and it's all these small tasks, and then when a young person does it and they complete that and, and, and it's acknowledged, and if they record like an intro like that and we go, yeah, that intro's fine, we don't need to change that, we don't need to do it again or edit it, we'll get, that's going to go on air at some point. The young people then, that kind of breeds confidence and it breeds enthusiasm. And it's the enthusiasm that they want to learn the next thing. And they kind of go, I'm going to have just learned that. Maybe I can do this. And they get a bit of faith. And that's kind of instilled in them because it's actual what they're doing. It's, it's, not, it's not fair. There's the process and they've done something. So they go, I'm going to minute. Yeah, I can do this. So they want to learn and it's all working. So that, to that trust and that task completion, along with the whole element of fun, is, is just is the whole kind of, is the whole process and the whole package put together and it's them three things along with kind of just being alongside their peers that 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 is that it just creates the atmosphere that's ideal for personal development and growth which is the key thing for the young people the thing that's um 
I suppose the key thing that I, that I think is also vital is that the, the atmosphere and the environment in near and in community radio and where we were, that space, is completely suited and completely ideal to everything that I've just said. It was the perfect kind of, perfect just space and the, per, you know, every, it, was, it was welcoming. It was, uh, it was, um, it was really good. And um, so, at this, so at this point then, they're going to, um, they're going to, um, at this point then, you're, you're, <laughs> at the, at the, at the, uh, so at this point, the young people are act, 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 act actively engaging in the community, which is like, the, which is a big goal. Like they may not fully understand that, but they are actively engaging in the community and it's actual. So we're going to launch the program in the next month or two and do a big shebang and re self promote it, create awareness from your young people. We're going to invite the friends and the family. We're going to get the food in. We're going to have a big celebration of it and it's going to be really good. So they're actively engaging positively in the community. So it's really good. And, and it was only able because of the collaboration between the two organizations. So I'm going to finish, but there's a clip that I want to finish on that I think is really important because it really does show you and it's got the five young people. It's only like a minute just over and I think it's really important if we'll hold the bell to play that. So I'm going to say, uh, it's, so have a good listen to this because it's really good. So thank you very much and I'll see you later. Right. Right. the way you're at with Rob and like your surroundings you get me because like someone that's at there getting involved in a you know well off area whatever went to be skill they had money behind them so like, they're not they're going to be like just you know heading the books whatever do what they have to do they wouldn't like be going out just saying do you get me like no yeah well as you, as you said like if these bullies feel insecure and stuff <clears> would a, a quicker option though instead of dealing with all those a hundred people that this person bullied, would it not be more effective to deal with the bully and to help them not feel insecure and maybe stop those behaviours? Well, people can be like bullied for being confident. Like, yeah. yeah like, if you're confident yourself yeah. and you like say like if you actually study hard, someone might actually. Yeah. Do, like, someone but that goes back to what Mark is saying there, kind of about that being inside and and what Shannon was saying earlier about that being in the bully. So how do you tackle that in the bully? And obviously it's different circumstances for different people as well, for, di for different bullies, um, like what, what actually caused them to be a bully. Um, just wanted to try that there. Yeah, that's really true. Um, so yeah, maybe a way of looking at um, doing counselling sessions, like specifically yeah, specific. people who bully. Um, it, it would, there's less bullies usually than the bullied, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, bullies sometimes don't even realise that they're bullying. Exactly. Thank you very much.